Welcome back guys, my name is Austin from awfulmedia.com and this is part 9 of the introduction to C Sharp in Unity 3D. Now this is most likely the last part of this series and that's because we're going to get into actually doing some stuff in a game world. Maybe not make an actual game yet, but we'll be doing something that will make more sense for those of you who are looking to make a game. We might start out moving a cube around uh, on a floor with a character controller using the built-in character controller because it is awesome and easy to work with. Uh, but in this part, we're going to be actually talking about coroutines, at least on a very, very basic level to give you an idea of how to use them. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll run into issues where you need to play out an event over a certain frame or a certain amount of frames or over a certain amount of seconds or time. And to do that, the, the best way to go about doing that is to schedule them in a way in a coroutine. Now a coroutine, you are able to yield a, a method to stop for a certain amount of time or a certain amount of frame, maybe one frame. If you don't define anything, it will skip to the next frame. And the significance of that is that a method plays out in a single frame, right? When you call a method, everything in that method, it plays out in a single frame. And that's where you get the issue with a low frame rate. Say if you have a big method. Now, this isn't typically uh, related to code more often than uh, it is to optimization. But if you have a bloated method, right, something that's, that is just too much going on, it shouldn't be all this stuff going on and you run that method, since all of this has to play out on a single frame, it could potentially take that frame longer to, to process. Therefore, you get fewer frames in a single second. Uh, that's the point of frame rate, but that has absolutely nothing to do with what we're talking about today. Uh, just throwing it out there, just a side note. But what we want to do is instead of playing a method out over a single frame, maybe we want to break that up into two frames. Or maybe you want to break that up into 10 seconds and split it up into events of some kind. And that's uh, that's something we can do with coroutines. Now, it's a pretty simple thing to do, actually. And we'll get into that now. I have nothing in this scene. I split my game in scene view just so we can have a view of each. I have a camera. I want to bring this camera up. No, we're not working with the camera this time, so I don't need to do anything with that. I want to right-click in here and create a folder and call it scripts. Inside of this, I'm going to create a C Sharp script. I'm going to call this demo. And then I am going to create a game object, make a cube. And that will be fine like it is. And then I want to open up this demo. I've got to attach it to, this, the, to the cube. I want to open the demo up. Okay, so we have all this stuff. And what we're going to do, first of all, is when you create a coroutine, you have to uh, define a specific return type, such as a, a void or an int or a string. Those are return types. So you have to have a specific one for it to be a coroutine, for Unity to recognize it. And what that would be is it is an I enumerator. Now, I is in front of a keyword whenever it is an interface. So if we were to create an interface, we would throw an I, in, a, a capital I, in front of the keyword in order to identify it as a, an interface in the future. And quickly what an interface is, is I can create an interface down here and call it uh, I interface, pretty creative. And inside of this, what you can do is you can declare a method. Say, say the, the class that implements this interface always has to have the method of void eat. Now, anytime that I implement this interface, so you can implement an interface like this, I interface, or the name of the interface, whatever it is, put a comma next to the class that you're inheriting from, if you have a class you're inheriting from, and then do I interface. You can also add more interfaces to implement, but you can only implement a single class, or you can only inherit from a single class. So that's important. You can use interfaces to extend a class uh, a bit a bit more than you could with a class if you have if you want a single class 
or if you, if you need more than a single class, maybe you can figure out a way to work in an interface. But you can only declare things in an interface. You can't actually uh, run a function in here. You can't run a method. It all has to just be declarations. And you can't set a field in here. So I can't say int health, just like that. That'll throw an error. Now let me show you really quickly. Since this implements I interface, if I hit control S, come in here and go to my console, you'll see, hey, uh, well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what is the problem? I'll comment that out. And you'll see demo does not implement interface member iInterface.eat. So that's saying, now if you were to look this up, most of the time you'll read something that says an interface just uh, sets up a contract, right? And what that means is the interface sets up like a blueprint for what a class has to have if you implement from the interface. Now, our class demo now has to have the method of eat and it has to be the same return type. So it can't be an int, it can't be a string, it has to be a void because eat in the interface is a void. And I'll set up an eat like that and then I could define the method in here. And now everything should be fine with this. It shouldn't have an issue. Uh, it's not public, it, has to be, <laughs> it will have an issue. It has to be public for it to access it as that uh, error says, pretty straightforward. And then that should go away. Now, one cool thing about this is you can set up the, uh, the the parameters that this interface method is going to require. So I could say it has to have a name or it has to have a, an ID of some kind. And now this will require those same parameters. It needs a string and an integer. And I'm not passing any of those things. So here I could say string name int ID like that. And it would uh, be okay with that. So now you get what an interface is. It doesn't have much to do with uh, the coroutine, but since we're talking about interfaces, since this is actually an interface type, I wanted to bring it up and go over it quickly to give you, uh, give you some information that you may never use, who knows? But that's what an interface is. Now, I enumerator, we don't actually need to know any of that for this to work, uh, since when we compile this, when we use this return type, the compiler will implement this interface for us and we don't mess with any of that stuff. So we just set the return type to I enumerated. I'm going to put this on the bottom here. And then I'm going to set up the, the name or the identifier of this method. And it's going to be something, not, not ho, it's going to be go. And we can pass a few values to this just like it would in a method. So I could say do a float. And since I said that you can yield for a number of seconds, we can pass, whenever we, whenever we call this coroutine, we can pass a, a time, a time variable of some kind, right? So I'll say float, uh, wait, and we'll just go with that for now. And in the start, I want to call this coroutine, but how do I do that? It's a bit different. You have to use a method called start coroutine and pass it the coroutine you want to start. So that would be start coroutine. Now inside of this, I would say go. But I need to pass it a, a value of, of weight. So I would say it's a float, so I could do 5f. Now a float is like an integer, except it, it has a decimal place, right? You can, that's all it is really. Same thing, but with a decimal place. Pay control S, what are my errors going to say? So with a coroutine, you have the type of I enumerator, right? And this is the return type. So we have to return uh, something to that as it's not looking for a void. It's looking for an actual return. So a return is what it does is it passes the value back to the caller and it passes, uh, it passes the, what would be the term I'm looking for? It goes back to the caller where the caller is and continues down for that. Now this is the caller. This is what's calling that coroutine. So whenever I do a return, so I do a return or a, in this case, we could do a yield because we have access to a yield now as it is a coroutine and a yield is what stops it or it, it, it stops the method and breaks it up into two points or three points or different events. Then I would do a return and we could do a return of whatever. But if I do a return of five and as we'll see here, it won't throw an error. But the problem is now is we don't have a way to define a, a second amount for it to pause for. So if we were to test this, it would do it on separate frames. So I could do a print 
and I could print the time class. Now time class contains some time information that we can use and we will be using. Delta time is a big one we'll be using. But I could pass time dot time. And what this should do, if I remember correctly, is give me the time that it's called. And these should be different. Now the return value will not have anything to do with it, but I had to pass it a return value in order for it to stop. In order for it to be okay with that. Expect it after yield return. So it needs to it needs to know a value. So I'm just going to the five for now. And if I was to click play, you'll see zero and then point zero two. Now that's the time. So they're called at different times. Now without this, it wouldn't do that. It would be if I was to make this a void and then just call go like you would a normal method. Well, let me return. And if I was to stop this, we'll clear that, and I'll click play, you'll see they're called on the same timestamp. So we broke that up into two frames before. So I'll just go back to where we were. And now since this is on frame one, this is on frame two pretty much, we're breaking it up into two separate frames instead of it all being called in a single frame. Now what I want to do really quickly is I want to make a couple strings here just for fun. I'll do a string of text one and a string of text two. And we'll, we'll use those here in a second, but I want to pass those through. I'm going to pass uh, Austin and then awful media. And we'll use those here in a second. But I want to return new. Now new is when you want to instantiate or create an instance of an object. Now, now when I say object, I don't mean a game object. I mean an object as in a method or a class in object oriented programming. You're going to be using the term object quite a bit when you're defining uh, an object in code and not an object in a game world. And the object we want to create is wait for seconds. You may have noticed a couple different wait for some things there and they all do what they say. But wait for seconds, what we can do is pass the wait float to the wait for seconds method. And what that will do for us is now when it gets here, it will, ret it will return the wait for seconds time to the enumerator. And then it will go back to this. And after this time is up, it'll go back and continue on down this method. So this happens on the first frame. And then this happens for now, five seconds later because of the time we passed through. So this will happen five seconds later. And we'll see that with our timestamp. Clear that, click play. You'll see zero and then wait five seconds. We should see, yeah, 5.00134. And that is how that works. Now I want to use these strings. So we can pass values to uh, a coroutine just like we would a method. And they don't have to be used for the time or whatever. They can be used for whatever we want them to be used for. So I'm going to concatenate this text string on here. So it'll be text, oop, text one. Now I want to add a space in between these two. To do that, I will concat concatenate <laughs> a space in between them just like that. So we have the time. Then we're going to add, not adding like as in a number, but add on to at the end of a space. And then after that, add on to at the end of the text that we pass through, which will be Austin. We'll take this and do the same thing here. And this will be text two. Just to show how that works, we'll click play. And now we should say zero Austin and then 5.0 whatever it will be awful media. 5.07952 awful media. And that is how that works. So we covered quite a bit in this, uh, in this short video. Maybe not too short, but it's short enough. We covered interfaces in a very brief way. We covered uh, coroutines in a very brief way. If you didn't understand methods, maybe you do now. And the time class has a timestamp thing we can use to, to get time in between different things. The delta time, all that does is gets the time between the last frame. So you can keep it consistent. So if you have like 400 frames per second and you want to make sure that that doesn't uh, make the gameplay any different. So you don't move any quicker just because you have faster frame rate. You can use time dot delta time and multiply it by your modifier of some kind and figure out how fast the player should actually be going. 
Now you could use the fixed update that we went over before, and I believe this happens every, uh, this is a 50 frame rate instead of, it's, it's maxed at 50 times a second instead of however many frames per second you're getting. So that'll do it for this introduction to C Sharp in Unity 3D. You should be comfortable with uh, declaring variables and methods and working with them and setting up stuff that does stuff, debugging, printing, or like a debug log kind of thing, printing statements to the console, uh, creating classes, inheriting from classes. You have a kind of a brief overview of what an interface is. You know what arrays are, you know how to work with loops. Uh, maybe you don't know how to apply them into a game, and that's where the next series is going to come in. We're going to actually take what we've learned and uh, do some stuff. May not make a game in the next series, but we'll do something that we can call a game, right? We might, I was thinking we could do a cube that we're moving around in a world. It <laughs> sounds really, really exciting, I know. And then you'll have other cubes in the world that the you'll see the, how the collision works with the character controller. But the, the point is, is to get from where you start to a certain point. When you get to that certain point, you beat the level. That's a game, right? I mean, there's an objective, and there's a way to get to that objective. And there may not be any challenge in that game, but it'll it'll be a good learning experience. And after that, it looks like we're going to be doing a side-scrolling platformer. That's what won the vote. It is closed as of now, which is... 222 117 2014. Look at all of this awesome stuff people wrote. Very cool. Two people said nope, they're not excited about uh, learning all this stuff, and also they are silly though. So if you didn't vote in this, uh, sucks for you because now you have no say in where we go. But we are going to go with a side scrolling platformer. And as I have already started on a Missile Command style game, because I really love them, we may go over that as well. Shoot 'em up's always fun. We can turn our side-scrolling platformer into like a Contra-style shooting game. That'd be cool. So not really the typical uh, spaceship shooting, scrolling up the screen kind of thing with the different waves of enemies, but the shoot 'em up adaptation of like a Contra-style game where you are you have a gun and you point your mouse, go pew, 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 kind of like that. Uh, mixed with a side-scrolling platformer, you would have pretty much a Contra clone, but not as good. So that'll do it for this part. Now, next time we'll start on that first little walk to the end of the map game. <laughs> and then after that, we'll get started on something kind of fun. Thank you for watching. My name is Austin. Leave me a like if you enjoyed this series. Please, it'll help me out a lot. Uh, I'll see you next time.